Most Melbournians are aware of the ongoing construction of the Metro Tunnel, linking the Sunbury and Cranbourne Pakenham lines to reduce congestion in the city loop. What is less well known, however, is Melbourne Metro 2, a proposed rail tunnel to link the Mernda Line in the northeast and the Werribee Line in the southwest via the CBD. In this video, we'll be discussing this proposal, the benefits it would bring, and whether it would realistically happen. Several decades following the opening of the City Loop, Melbourne's first underground rail tunnel in the 1980s, concepts for a second rail tunnel beneath Melbourne began to emerge. In 2008, Sir Rod Eddington released the East West Link Needs Assessment Report, which, although primarily focused on road transport, envisaged the construction of several underground Melbourne metro lines. Foremost, this would include today's metro tunnel, which Eddington envisaged originally as going further out towards Caulfield, but more importantly, he also conceptualised the eventual construction of several more tunnels. Thus, in 2013, when Public Transport Victoria presented the Network Development Plan Metropolitan Rail, both the Metro Tunnel, then still known as Melbourne Metro 1, and a second tunnel, Melbourne Metro 2, were included. When Public Transport Victoria was established by the Ballew Government in 2013, it was tasked with preparing reports into both the future of the broader Melbourne rail system, which eventually became this network development plan, but also into the construction of lines to Doncaster and Roeville. The Doncaster Rail Report foresaw the need to construct additional capacity between Clifton Hill and the CBD, if a rail line to Doncaster was to be constructed. The report suggested the construction of a tunnel between Merry, Clifton Hill, Parkville, and terminating at Flagstaff Gardens, a new station located just north of Flagstaff. This would quickly evolve into the Melbourne Metro 2 concept. In the 2013 Network Development Plan, the tunnel was further extended. The first phase would see it constructed from Merry through to Southern Cross, after which it would be extended to Fisherman's Bend in the future. This was envisaged for so-called Stage 3, with a timeline of between 2022 and 2027. The extension to Fisherman's Bend would then occur between 2027 and 2032 in Stage 4, and the report also acknowledged the potential to further extend the tunnel to Newport and link it to the southwestern rail line towards Werribee and Geelong but this was not originally incorporated into the plan. In 2018, this was backed up by Melbourne City Council, and in the same year, an updated version of the network development plan included the entire line, although it would be built in two phases. In 2021, Infrastructure Victoria once again supported the project's construction, although like several prior reports, it now recommended to construct the project's western phase first, followed by the east, due to the enormous cost of the project. More recently, in 2024, the Victorian government released a draft alignment for a rail corridor through Fisherman's Bend, which would be the first phase of Metro 2, linking Newport to Parkville. Let's take a look at the project on a map. The line would probably be constructed in two phases, as already established, between Newport West and either Southern Cross or Parkville, and then from there to Merry. Trains on the Western Corridor would originate from either Geelong or Wyndham Vale, travelling via Werribee to Laverton. From Laverton, they would take the direct express tracks, as opposed to the Altona Loop. The project would start at a new Newport West interchange station. This four-platform interchange would presumably provide cross-platform connections between services coming from the Altona Loop and the tunnel to maximise connections between lines. Altona loop trains would now always terminate at Laverton and would always run via Footscray as opposed to via Metro 2. The line would then begin to go underground after Champion Road. Initially, it is unlikely that a station would be provided at Newport due to the high cost. However, a station shell would likely be constructed at Newport South, roughly near the Newport Signals Depot, land already owned by the Victorian government. This would, in future, allow for a connection with Newport Station. While the omission of a connection at Newport would disadvantage Williamstown passengers, 
because of the very low volume of passengers on this line, and consequently, low numbers of expected interchange passengers. It has been decided that at least initially, the cost significantly outweighs the benefits. Provision would nevertheless be left for an interchange at Newport, as aforementioned. The line would then travel beneath Newport, crossing the Yarra River deep underground. This river crossing would be by far the most expensive element of the project. Initial plans saw provision being left for a station at Webb Dock. However, the 2024 alignment ignores, or at least doesn't depict this. The first station would be located at Fisherman's Bend. This would be in the middle of the Fisherman's Bend precinct, near the future University of Melbourne campus along the future Turner Street. This would be a part of a transit-oriented and walkable precinct with tram lines, bus services and bike infrastructure. The line would then curve to the southeast and then back north, stopping at Montague Station. Located on Fennel Street, around Bridge and Bertie Streets, it would be in the centre of new developments. The line would then curve north and east to travel to a new Southern Cross underground station, along Burke Street between Harbour Esplanade and Warundjeri Way. Following this, the alignment is less defined. The line would likely curve north to travel through Flagstaff and Parkville. Provision has been left for Metro 2 as part of Metro Tunnel construction at Parkville. From Parkville, the line is envisaged to travel eastwards to a new station in Fitzroy, most likely along Johnston Street. The line would then travel northwards to a new, low-level Clifton Hill station. There is a very small possibility that the tunnel could surface before Clifton Hill to allow for same-level interchange. However, this is unlikely due to property acquisition that would be required, the downward sloping terrain from Clifton Hill towards the CBD, and, with the flat junction between the Mernda and Hurstbridge line retained, the capacity benefits of the project would essentially be entirely eliminated. Thus, assuming the line was to travel underground, it would continue north below the Merry Creek, bypassing Rushall and instead travelling to a new below-ground Merry station, before finally linking into the existing line near Westbourne Grove. This would lead to the permanent closure of Rushall Station, which would no longer see any passenger service, although the existing right-of-way would likely be maintained for operational flexibility, such as maintenance or special services to the MCG. Some other proposals, such as the Infrastructure Victoria 2021 proposal, instead envisage the line travelling further north, via perhaps the old Inner Circle Line right-of-way in Fitzroy North, before linking to the Mernda Line, but this does not appear to be the preferred route. Initially, at least, the line would be entirely double-track, and virtually every station would use an island platform design. Some have suggested, including myself, that in the very long term, the line between Newport and Southern Cross could be expanded to four tracks to separate out Geelong fast services. However, this is likely to be many decades away. The line would be serviced exclusively by a new northeast to southwest through line. Trains would originate at Mernda and Wallet, travelling through to Clifton Hill, Southern Cross, and Newport, where they would then continue to Wyndham Vale via Werribee and to Geelong although it is more than likely that many Geelong trains would originate at Parkville or Southern Cross instead. Service on the line would likely operate every 5-10 to 10 minutes during the off-peak, and up to every 2 minutes during peak hours. The core section between Parkville and Newport West would potentially be served more frequently than the remainder of the proposed Mernda Wyndham Vale line due to the higher demand in this section. The project allows for several aims. The initial phase, Newport to the city, will be a catalyst for further development in Fisherman's Bend, will eliminate a capacity bottleneck between Newport and Footscray, and will reduce commute times. The second phase will connect to the Metro Tunnel, will provide access to the Parkville Health and Education Precinct, will connect Fitzroy to the rail network for the first time, will reduce the burden on trams and other transport modes, will reduce capacity issues between Clifton Hill and the city, will be a catalyst for new higher density development, and will allow for the long-term construction of a rail line to Doncaster, if desired. And yes, I know, there was once a train line to Fitzroy, but that's long gone. However, the cost of the project is absolutely enormous. 
The first phase alone was estimated to cost around $7 billion in a 2017 report that used a slightly different alignment. But thanks to construction cost increases and alignment alterations, it would now probably cost $10 billion or more just for the section between Newport West and Southern Cross. The second phase could cost a similar amount or slightly more, but possibly the project could end up costing $25 to $30 billion or even more. This is an enormous cost that is likely to be prohibitively expensive for the time being. Due to the ongoing construction of the suburban rail loop and other projects, the budget for transport projects of all kinds is likely to be restricted going forward. Albeit, that isn't to say that it won't eventually be possible to find funding. Nevertheless, because of its cost, alternatives to the project will undoubtedly be investigated. Foremost, it's not entirely clear that the project is desperately needed. In fact, neither of the two corridors from Newport or Clifton Hill to the CBD is fully congested. As a result, if any upgrades were needed, it would probably be preferable to implement communications-based train control signalling to increase capacity from around 24 trains per hour to 36. This would be more than sufficient capacity for the medium term. Additionally, access to Fisherman's Bend could initially be provided by light rail as opposed to heavy rail to save cost. Importantly, the project is actually unlikely to be required anytime soon, but instead would be built more for future provision and to further segregate the various train lines, as opposed to because it is actually needed right now for capacity reasons. Given the aforementioned cost, this significantly weakens the case for the project to be built for some time. Overall, it would appear that the project is likely to be constructed eventually, but because of its cost and scope, it is perhaps many years away, especially from being completed. Personally, I would expect that following the opening of the Metro Tunnel, there would be continuing internal work on the project, and anywhere from 1 or 2 to 10 years later, the project would be officially announced. Still, completion of the entire line from Newport to Merry could be as far away as the 2060s, by which time plans may have changed significantly. And in fact, the line may never actually be completed at all. Still though, that is far too far away to predict, and I don't think it's particularly useful to give the project a timeline beyond the next 20 to 30 years. Thanks for watching. I hope that this video has given you more understanding of Melbourne Metro 2 and the future of Melbourne's entire rail network. Subscribe if you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one.